They're not uh, mom and pop investors and mom and pop depositors that put in a little bit of money, saving it for a rainy day. That's John Stewart echoing the populist anger over the Silicon Valley bank bailout, just so we're on the same page. If you have a bank account, you know the FDIC insures your money up to $250,000. The venture capitalists at Silicon Valley Bank either didn't get the memo or didn't care or were more interested in the high interest rates that Silicon Valley Bank was paying. Upwards of 90% of the people who banked there had more than the $250,000 threshold in their account. Big money, totally more than $150 billion. Compare that to the median bank account balance for everyday people. No high school diploma, $1,000. High school diploma, 2,500. Some college, 4,000. Bachelor's degree, $15,000. So the depositors at FSVB were well off and not surprisingly well connected. For example, California Governor Gavin Newsom owns three wineries that are SVB clients. The Intercept reports he lobbied the White House and Treasury on the bailout, and the bank gave a $100,000 to his wife's charity in 20. 20, but it doesn't stop there. And it's not just Democrats, it's Republicans involved in this as well. Another report from The Intercept says one of Speaker Kevin McCarthy's former staffers lobbied on behalf of the bank to weaken regulations in 2018. The bailout perhaps creates a two-tier banking system. On one hand, the billionaire banks that are too big to fail or too important to fail, if you use them, your money's safe. Then there's everyone else, the money you deposit in your local bank if it's over $250,000, could become an unsecured loan. Trish Regan is with us, former Goldman Sachs trader. I'm wondering, and I know you and I disagree about this a little bit, but I'm wondering if two things can be true at once. One, the bailout of SVB needed to happen because otherwise you would have had a meltdown in the American financial system. But number two is it continues the bad precedent that certain people get bailed out and do not have to pay for the bad risks that they took. I think you're absolutely right. I think those two things are absolutely true. Look, and I've said this to you, you didn't really have a choice on this one. It's like, you know, the patient comes into the emergency room and they're about to die unless they go into this emergency surgery. And so you do what you have to do. And not only would that patient have died, everyone would have died. Right, like, let's be very clear. If SB, SVB had opened up on Monday morning and you couldn't get your money out and you had all these businesses that couldn't make their payroll and they folded as a result, well, what do you think would happen? Every single one of us would be marching straight into our bank and say, give me everything you got and we'd be liquidating everything. That is a bank run. That is what the federal government needed to prevent. That was a case where the government stepped in and did the right thing. I mean, we can argue about them leaving interest rates as low as they did and therefore helping to create this mess in the first place. Uh, they created the mess, of course, but then they did come and clean it up. They had to clean it up. They really did. Okay, Otherwise, so, so I cannot even out, imagine though. what would have happened. Silicon Valley, the, I get everybody saying these are small businesses. They're big tech companies with enormous venture capital behind them. Uh, that got effectively bailed out. A lot of them didn't diversify their cash holdings at different banks because they liked that Silicon Valley was paying them a little bit higher interest rate. They got greedy. They didn't exercise good due diligence. There was a number of real problems uh, that went on here. If this had been a bank in East Palestine, Ohio, that had a couple of creditors over $250,000, depositors over $250,000 that were some farmers and maybe a couple of uh, grain elevators in town. I'm not so sure the federal government would have been that quick to come in and guarantee above the $250,000 limit, right? Well, I can tell you this. Look, if it bleeds, it leads, right? And so there were a lot of big names. I hear your point. A lot of big people, right, associated with this, and a lot of big money. So if you had had some smaller farms above $250,000, right, because that's what the FDIC insures, the question is, would it have gotten as much attention? What I can tell you is, yeah, it would have in the financial community by the time the press caught up to it, forget about it. But those of us that watch this in the financial community would say, hey, gee, did you see that little bank in Iowa? Whoa. And you know what? You would have had the same exact thing happen, a domino effect. And then the feds would have had to step in. Perhaps, to your point, this was big enough with enough high profile people that the feds said, OK, wait a second, we got to get this one under control. And that they did.
Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.